Hi, I'm Dr. Yosef with Daring, and today I'm going to talk about how do you differentiate post-SSRI sexual dysfunction from normal erectile dysfunction. So um, diving right into it, so you need to have two things. First, it's obvious you need to have been exposed to an SSRI medication um, for it to be SS post-SSRI sexual dysfunction. And then the next thing is, is really the thing that makes it kind of unique um, and stand out the most, and that's you need to have a change in your uh, sensation down there. So, um, and usually this is described as, you know, you, you may touch uh, your genitals and they may feel um, numb, almost like they're, and this, uh, you know, they've had some local anesthetic put on them, or maybe instead of it being pleasurable or enjoyable, or, you know, having that nice sensation, um, you touch down there and there's nothing. It just feels like you're touching the skin on the back of your arm. So you have altered sensation. And that's probably the most unique symptom to differentiate it because that does not happen in normal erectile dysfunction. So uh, it's not the only symptom that, that people have. They usually describe a whole range of other symptoms such as, you know, they can have reduced sexual desire. You know, they can have... <laughs> Uh, you know, erectile dysfunction, you know, difficulty maintaining an erection. Um, when they uh, climax and come to orgasm, it can be, uh, you may not even be able to do it or it may be a very weak or diminished orgasm. Um, and the other thing is that you need to be uh, off your SSRI for about three months and it's persisted. And then also, um, this, the symptoms that you're experiencing, they, they cannot have existed uh, prior to you starting the drug. So say you had a lot of anxiety and that was manifesting as some kind of performance anxiety and you know you already had some, um, um, some erectile dysfunction going along with that and you know, you're on the SSRI and you stop and it's still characteristically the same, um, then that would um, probably not be post-SSRI sexual dysfunction unless maybe you had a whole range of other symptoms that were new. So it needs to be distinct from any erectile dysfunction that you had before going on the SSRI. Uh, there can't be any uh, medical conditions that are contributing to, that, to it. So, you know, if, if you have, tr you know, trauma down there of some sort, if you have uh, problems with your prostate, uh, that, that may uh, uh, contribute to that if you're a man. And... Um, also, what we see in older individuals, a lot of cardiovascular disease risk factors can be um, can lead to erectile dysfunction. Things like, you know, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, uh, but those things do not lead to the uh, the sensory problems. So, um, if you're having a lot of sensory problems, they wouldn't be accounted for by something like cardiovascular disease. Uh, the other thing that's important is um, whether you know what medications are you on. You know, or if you're abusing, uh, well, if you're using other substances, if you're a heavy alcohol user, that can also contribute to um, um, erectile dysfunction as well. So uh, I hope that kind of sums it up. Um, I would say probably, yeah, the most key symptoms are the uh, the genital anesthesia. That, that seems to be the most unique thing about it. That seems to be the thing that is the most difficult to explain away with alternative uh, factors. So uh, yes, I hope this helps you differentiate uh, what may be PSSD from uh, normal uh, normal erectile dysfunction or you know sexual dysfunction. So thank you.